In this video, I will explain why you shouldn't react to your emotions and how you can control them instead. I will also share some wisdom from the ancient Stoic philosophers who practiced this way of living. Stoicism is a school of philosophy that teaches you how to live a good and happy life by using reason and virtue. Stoics believe that everything in the world is determined by fate or nature, and that we have no control over what happens to us. Therefore, we should not be disturbed or upset by things that are outside of our power, but rather focus on what we can do to improve ourselves and our situation. One of the main principles of Stoicism is to distinguish between what is in our power and what is not. What is in our power are our thoughts, judgments, opinions, desires, actions, and reactions. What is not in our power are external things like other people's behavior, events, circumstances, opinions, or outcomes. We should not waste our energy or time on things that are not in our power, but rather accept them with calmness and indifference. Another principle of Stoicism is to cultivate a rational and virtuous mind. We should use logic and reason to examine everything we encounter and form correct judgments about it. We should also practice self-discipline and self-control over our impulses and emotions. We should act according to our moral values and principles, which are based on wisdom and justice. We should also be grateful for what we have and avoid complaining or envying others. Stoicism can help us cope with stress, anxiety, anger, sadness, fear, or any other negative emotion that we may experience in life. By applying Stoicism to our emotions, we can learn to manage them effectively instead of letting them overwhelm us or affect our decisions. We can also become more resilient and adaptable to changing situations. To illustrate how Stoicism works in practice, let me share with you some examples from the lives of the ancient Stoic philosophers who taught this way of living. Chapter 1, Epictetus Epictetus was a former slave who became one of the most influential teachers of Stoicism in the Roman Empire. He wrote his own handbook called the Enchiridion, the handbook, which contains practical advice on how to live according to Stoic principles. One example from his handbook shows how he dealt with anger towards his former master who mistreated him as a slave. I used to say, how much better off I am than my master. For he has no idea what it means. But then I realized that he had no idea what it means either. Epictetus used this example to show how anger is irrational and futile when directed at someone who has no control over your fate or happiness. He also used it to show how anger can make you forget your own freedom and dignity as a human being. Another example from his handbook shows how he dealt with fear towards death. Do not be afraid when you see death approaching, for death does nothing but take away what already belongs. Epictetus used this example to show how fear is based on ignorance about the nature of death. He also used it to show how fear can make you lose sight of your true purpose in life. Chapter 2, Seneca Seneca was a Roman statesman, writer, dramatist, philosopher, tutor of Nero, the emperor, who was known for his eloquence and wisdom on various topics such as politics, ethics, and psychology. He wrote many letters, dialogues, and essays on Stoic topics, which were later collected in his works such as Letters from a Stoic, on Anger, on Providence, and on the Shortness of Life. He also wrote tragedies and comedies that explored human nature and emotions. One example from his letters shows how he dealt with grief after losing his wife Calpurnia. I have learned that grief does not come from loss but from love, for when we love someone so much that we cannot bear their absence, we suffer more than if they were dead. Seneca used this example to show how grief is based on attachment to someone who may leave us at any moment. He also used it to show how grief can make us lose perspective and appreciate what we have. He advised himself to detach himself from his wife's life and focus on living well himself. He also encouraged himself to remember her memory positively and honor her legacy. Chapter 3, Marcus Aurelius Marcus Aurelius was a Roman emperor who ruled from 161 until 180 AD. He was also a philosopher who wrote his own personal diary called Meditations, which contains reflections on his own thoughts, feelings, actions, and experiences as a ruler and a Stoic. 
He wrote his diary in Greek, which was his second language, and addressed it to himself as a way of self-improvement and self-examination. One example from his diary shows how he dealt with anger towards his enemies. The best way to avenge yourself is not to become like the wrongdoer. Marcus Aurelius used this example to show how anger is harmful and irrational when directed at someone who has wronged you. He also used it to show how anger can make you lose your moral integrity and become like the person you hate. Another example from his diary shows how he dealt with anxiety about the future. Never let the future disturb you. You will meet it, if you have to, with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. Marcus Aurelius used this example to show how anxiety is based on uncertainty and imagination about what may happen. He also used it to show how anxiety can make you forget your present duties and resources. Chapter 4, Cicero Cicero was a Roman orator, lawyer, politician, and philosopher who lived from 106 to 43 BC. He was known for his eloquence and influence on the Latin language and literature. He wrote many works on rhetoric, politics, law, and philosophy, such as on duties, on friendship, on the nature of the gods, and on the ends of good and evil. One example from his work shows how he dealt with sorrow after losing his daughter Tolia. I try to divert my mind from my sorrow by reading and writing, but these things are only a temporary relief, not a cure. Cicero used this example to show how sorrow is natural and inevitable when we lose someone we love. He also used it to show how sorrow can make us seek distractions and comforts that do not heal our pain. Another example from his work shows how he dealt with old age and death. Old age is not a burden, but a blessing, if one lives wisely and well. Death is not a punishment, but a release, if one dies honorably and nobly. Cicero used this example to show how old age and death are not to be feared or avoided, but embraced and welcomed. He also used it to show how old age and death can make us appreciate and improve our life and character. Chapter 5, How to Control Your Emotions Now that we have learned from the examples of the ancient Stoic philosophers, let us see how we can apply their teachings to our own emotions. Here are some steps that you can follow to control your emotions instead of reacting to them. Identify your emotion. What are you feeling right now? Is it anger, fear, sadness, joy, or something else? Try to name your emotion as precisely as possible. Analyze your emotion. Why are you feeling this way? What is the cause or trigger of your emotion? Is it something external or internal? Is it something in your power or not? Is it rational or irrational? Evaluate your emotion. Is your emotion helpful or harmful? Is it appropriate or inappropriate? Is it proportional or disproportionate? Is it constructive or destructive? Modify your emotion. How can you change your emotion for the better? What can you do to reduce or increase your emotion? What can you think or say to yourself to alter your emotion? What can you avoid or seek to influence your emotion? Express your emotion. How can you communicate your emotion to others or yourself? What is the best way to convey your emotion? What is the purpose of expressing your emotion? What is the effect of expressing your emotion? By following these steps, you can learn to control your emotions instead of letting them control you. You can also learn to use your emotions as tools and guides, not as masters and tyrants. You can also learn to cultivate positive emotions and reduce negative emotions, which will improve your well-being and happiness. Chapter 6, Stoic Quotes to Remember To conclude this video, I would like to share with you some Stoic quotes that you can remember and use whenever you face emotional challenges or difficulties. These quotes are from the Stoic philosophers that we have discussed in this video, and they summarize their wisdom and advice on how to control your emotions. It is not things that trouble us, but our judgments about things. Epictetus We suffer more in imagination than in reality. Seneca You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Marcus Aurelius 
The wise man does not expose himself needlessly to danger, since there are few things for which he cares sufficiently, but he is willing, in great crises, to give even his life, knowing that under certain conditions it is not worthwhile to live. Cicero I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and useful about Stoicism and how to control your emotions. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell, so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I appreciate you if you have made it this far. Leave a comment if you have any questions or feedback. But hold on, there are still some more tips to discuss. Stoicism is a powerful and practical philosophy that can help you live a good and happy life by using reason and virtue. By applying Stoicism to your emotions, you can learn to manage them effectively instead of reacting to them impulsively. You can also learn from the examples and teachings of the ancient Stoic philosophers who practiced this way of living. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. Remember, you have the power to control your emotions, not the other way around. As Epictetus said, the key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best.